Hello everyone. Welcome to the second part on week two's video lecture. Um, in this lecture, uh, we're going to talk about a few applications uh, of, uh, this, of this week's topic uh, using linear functions. Um, so here we see an exercise uh, which is um, uh, right, asking us to write out the linear function, uh, which is more of a segmented linear function. So you see you have three segments, one, two, three. Um, so now uh, the question the question is like this. So we have uh, we're asked to calculate the monthly cost of natural gas, and uh, it's the same as like our utility bill, right? So uh, we know that the price is 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 uh, increasing for all of us, and uh, there's a tiered pricing for different usage, uh, similarly for our uh, income tax. So if we pass a certain threshold, you will be sort of taxed based on another different uh, rate. Uh, so this is actually this the same sort of tiered pricing. So if our use if our uh, uh, usage is within the first five so called CCF, that could be hundred feet, um, then we are charged uh, this rate per CCF. So this is a very important information. And then if we pass the the sort of first five CCF, then enter into another. Uh, segment then we are charged with this uh, rate and then uh, the for those above 40 then we're charged with this rate so uh per ccf means that if we express the ccf as uh, x which is also given here then uh it will follow a linear function which is uh, like this so f of x is equal to to example in the first case it could be 0 point uh, seven eight six six x so this is uh this is what it means. So if x x to one, then we'll be charged uh, with uh, seven point seven eight six six, and if x x to the two, then of course correspondingly two times uh zero point seven eight, which is uh I'll omit here. So uh so this is how we can write out the the linear function itself um in terms of uh, based on the context of this uh of this question. You see, here is this. Uh, okay. All right. So, okay. So that's for the first five. So means meaning that's for the first five CCF. Now we know that's actually be less than equal to five, and of course, uh, above zero because we are actually consuming something. So that's the first segment. Now in the second segment so over the next 35 meaning that x should be above five because we are in the second region and we should be below uh 40. now 40 is 35 plus five because it's in the next 35 so um uh, now what is the the form of the linear function itself so we know that now this is the uh this is the read so uh uh, 0 0.4601 times x. So this is the, the rate of uh, uh, of, of the uh, cost uh, charged to us if we were to use this amount. But x itself is actually based on uh, the uh, the assumption that we already consumed five CCF. So uh, now the sort of uh, sort of the the baseline we're looking at is when x equals to uh, five. Now, uh, f of x equal to five should be now. If we plug in the the formula for the first uh, expression, then zero point seven eight six six uh, times five should be equal to. Uh, in this case, I'll just write the the answers here: three point nine three three. So this is sort of our baseline we are looking at. So for those actually above five. We are going to charge be charged with this rate, but our sort of intercept, our baseline is three point nine three three. So this is uh, something to bear in mind. Um, of course, uh, here I actually made a mistake. So here there should not be uh, x because we are also living in the range of above five. So we should sort of put a horizontal shift to x so that now we're looking at 0 0.4601 such uh, times x minus 5 because we are already we have already used uh 5 ccf 
So this is the form we need to put for the second segment. Now, similarly, we can look at the third segment. So if we plug in x equals to, now the sort of ending point is 40. So assuming we have already used a 40 and when you translate into the, the expression here, assuming we have already used the uh, 40 CCF, then this results, if we plug that in, would be uh, 20.0365. So this is just uh, some calculation which you can verify earlier, uh, later. And now our final form for the function would be, now of course we plug that in 20.0365 and also the, the new reads, the new slope uh, and times the, uh, the x variable. x variable itself has to be assuming that we have already consumed 40 CCF. So that's how I can get the the uh, different pieces together. So now this is uh, different uh, 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 segments and we can express it uh, together. For example, if we sum, uh, summarize all this together, then we can say fx as a final, uh, final uh, uh, solution for this. So fx equals to uh, 0 0.7866x and if x is within this range. So this just to tidy things up uh, and put everything together. And the second case, 3.933. And we can divide the corresponding, the, the uh, putting the corresponding uh, reads and also the x variable, assuming that we have consumed uh, 5 CCF. If f is within this range, so it's above 5 and below 40 less or equal to. So uh, so the so in terms of why uh, where we should put the uh, the, the equal to neck, uh, equal to five uh, in the first case or in the second case is actually uh, all fine because they are actually equal to each other. So you can say x less than five and here x above or equal to five, which is also a uh, uh, fine because now when x is equal to five, these two terms actually uh, equal to each other the first and second expression. Um, we have the last expression, which is here. Uh, assuming we have consumed 40 CCF already, if x above 40, right? Um, so this is how we can write the, the final uh, solution. And if you graph it on a coordinate system, so this is how it would look like. We're first starting here, and then uh, this is the first segment. If we put it here, and because now it's uh, the 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 slope is actually uh, smaller than the first case, then we actually the, the line would be be flat, and then even more so for the second segment, for the third segment. So that's how we would uh, write the function or graph a function uh, uh, in this case. So so yeah, that's the first application, and. Uh, um, let me look at a few more uh, things to say about the linear function. So uh, the linear function, when we look at the slope, if it's slope is equal to uh, zero, right? Then we look at actually a flat line, which is horizontal. This is a horizontal line because slope is zero. Now, if uh, you look at something like this, so there's still the coordinate system, if it's like this, then uh, it's actually not defined. And that's because if we look at, so this is uh, uh, zero, and then gradually uh, moving up the, the value of the slope, then it's actually becoming uh, infinity in terms of the value of the slope So until this point. So this uh, situation itself is not really defined. And if slope is positive, right? So in the general case uh, like this, then we'll look at we'll be looking at the function something like this because the function is increasing. And if it's negative, it means that the function itself is uh, decreasing. Okay, now let's look at another example. So in this case, uh, we're given quite some information. So uh, so the question says that when they press, so when they 
price of the uh, the per box of oranges is nine dollars. We have this many supply from the markets, and the demand is is this many. So if we of course we change the price, and so we have another demand uh, and supply in terms of the number of boxes. So the question is asking if we are given uh, the price supply equation, which is this form. Uh, obviously, obviously it's a linear function. We have the slope and we have the intercept. Uh, and the P is the price uh, in terms of the dollars uh, from the determined by the markets. And also X is the, the uh, supply in thousands of boxes. So uh, now the question is, how do we plug in the information given here, uh, the context into this formula so that we can solve for uh, M and B, the slope and the intercept. So let's see how to how to put things in perspective. So we're giving information that when x itself is equal to, uh, so x is the number of the uh, supply in thousand boxes. So this when the supply is three to zero, and because it's in thousands, now we'll remove the thousands, and um, the corresponding price will be nine, right? So this is one data point we have, and corresponding we have another point. When the supply is this amount, then we have this number or this price determined uh, by the market. So these are the two points given by the uh, the question itself. So now, given these two points, now the rest of things is very easy. We just plug in uh, and uh, solve for M and B. So first, we can solve for M, which is the slope. Now we know that we can just uh, take the difference of the y coordinates. And then the corresponding difference in x. So we can solve for that. So uh, if we do the calculation, this is going to be 0 0.01. Uh, and then with this, now, according to the previous uh, lecture, we mentioned that with this formation, it's actually easier to use the point slope form of, uh, of the linear function to get the, the equation. Now, so using the point slope form, Right, we can see that's the function we're looking at will be. So P is in this case is the y variable minus the if we're taking this point, that's the point, right? We're going to look at uh we go to M is uh, uh 0 0.01 in this case, and our uh, x minus three to zero. So this will be our uh form for the linear function, and we just uh, do the uh, necessary simplification using uh, the uh, uh, algebraic manipulation, uh, symbolic manipulation. And then we can see that uh, the final form will be 0.01x plus 5.8, right? So this is how we solve for uh, the, the M and uh, the B as the intercept using the point slope form. Uh, so the second question is actually very similar. So we can just plug in correspondingly the two points uh, in terms of the demand perspective and then uh, use the point slope form. So you can just uh, proceed uh, like this. So the third question, which is using, uh, which is asking about the points of intersection. So we look at the point of intersection and uh, we know that it's actually asking the uh, point of intersection of these two functions. So in this case, we have this first uh, function, uh, p, as a function of x, and also we have the uh, another function. This is from the supply side. So we have another p of x, which is from the demand side. So when the demand equals supply, this is what we mean by intersection. This also calls the equilibrium price, meaning that uh, the supply side and demand side actually uh, uh, sort of converging and they are equal to each other. And then we want to solve for uh, the X that's making this, uh, that makes this happen. So this is uh, what the question is, is asking about. Of course, once we have the uh, formula, we have the expression for the demand uh, uh, side as the, in terms of the, the price demand equation, then we can solve for X that uh, makes the equilibrium price. Um, so that's about it for the, this question. And lastly, let's talk about the function the decomposition, the function composition. So function composition means that we actually have sort of a nested function to work with. So for example, we have uh, one function, which you can denote as f of x. And uh, when we look at the nested function, so x itself is also another function, which you can denote as 
uh, f of g of x. So now uh, this actually look at uh, sequentially, we can say x is input, we pass it into g of x, so g is uh, another function, and then g of x pass into f itself, so it comes out of g of x. So this is a series of uh, transformations. So this is step, the first step transformation, this is second step transformation. Right, so we can we can express it uh, in different ways. So we can say f of g of x. This one to express it uh, equivalent. You can say uh, f of this uh, uh, period or circle sign here, which denotes the uh, function composition of x. So in this case, we first pass into g, and then pass into f. Uh, now, uh, let's look at one example. So say f of x is equal to 2x minus 1, g of x equal to x cube, right? So if you want to look at f of g of x, now uh, we need to treat this as an entity. So uh, which, well, in this case, the entity itself is x cube, right? And then we need to plug the entity inside the form of uh, fx. So in this case, uh, uh, because now x itself is just the input, it can be any input. Now in this case, the input for fx is the output of gx, right? So in this case, it's the x cube. So we just plug in. Now x would become the x cube and uh, the rest of the, the expression follows. So this is nothing more than applying a series of functional transformations so that uh, we first go through, so first x goes through x squared, right? And then goes through the uh, the uh, the second layer of transformation, which is to uh, x cubed minus one. And it's because now fx equal to uh, uh, this form, right? So that's because we are treating x itself as an entity and it can be anything which includes the output of another function. So this is what we mean by uh, function composition. And the one thing to note is that uh, function transformation is not commutative, which means that f of g of x uh, is not equal to g of uh, fx. Right? So we can just use the same example and easily see that it's not really equal to each other. Okay, so that's uh, for for this lecture and uh, helps to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.